Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> thank you, Natalie, for this invitation. Uh, it's a real pleasure. And of, of course, thank you, Professor Steinberg, for this uh, invitation in the, uh, I guess, uh, tem the US temple of, the, of, of phenomenology. So thanks again. Um, uh, since I am the last uh, speaker, I guess, for, for the day, I may have some privilege, no? Like I can do uh, an extended presentation. Uh, no, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I saw your heart rate increase. Okay. So I'll do my best not to. <laughs> Not to be too much uh, technical or too, too, too boring eventually, so tell me if uh, it's too long or things like that. And uh, uh, I would like to present you the, the framework of a model uh, of emotion we are developing since a uh, few years now in, uh, in association with philosophers and especially Nathalie. And um, together we're trying to have, I guess, an integrative approach of neuroscience uh, that embeds uh, phenomenological and neuroscience uh, accounts, accounts. And our phenomenological background is, uh, is the, the lifetime of Husserl. Well, and all the later developments that have been done, especially uh, with uh, Varela's work on the spacious present, that is, uh, emotion is at the core of uh, uh, the lived time. And more recently, Nathalie, who brought phenomenological arguments for uh, an integrative model of emotion uh, that was published in, this, uh, in the Rainbow of Emotion as a title. And although scientific uh, accounts were um, lacking at that time, and this is precisely one of our goals to bring uh, scientific arguments to this model of, uh, of emotion. Um, and, okay, I will try to describe you the, the model uh, now, the framework of this model, that follows two key points to please keep in mind for the presentation. The first is that surprise as a lived experience rather than a, a classical understanding of a primary emotion is a global experience that includes the three temporal phases and that is the core of the entire dynamic. I will, uh, of course, explain what I mean. And the second key point is that the cardiovascular physiology temporarily sets in motion the dynamic of emotional emergence. Um, first, uh, what, are the th what we contend are the three temporal structures of, uh, of our model of emotional emergence. Consistently with usual view of the leave time, we propose that there are three phases in emotional emergence that are non-linear or successive, but rather dynamic and circular. And we contend that the three phases are anticipation, crisis, and aftermath. Anticipation corresponds to the expectation of an emotional stimulus, crisis a perception of an emotional stimulus, and after that, the traces of the, after, of the emotional stimulus that has disappeared have been habituated. And interestingly, if we, if we use this, 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 uh, this phase, well, if one of these phases become predominant in the lived experience uh, because of an emotional context, it can be used to distinguish a specific emotion. For, for instance, if you are anticipating a threat, you will be in anxiety. If you see the threat, you will, be, you will experience fear. And when it has disappeared, you may be experiencing ruminations about it. Now, how can we describe each of these phases according to both phenomenology and neuroscience? First, anticipation, and what do we know about anticipation neuroscience, and what is the cardiac and brain physiology of anticipation? Well, we know now that during anticipation of an, an emotional stimulus, we can record a strong negative electric wave in EEG, in electroencephalogram. And this wave seems to correspond to activation in the brain, especially in the insular cortex, which is 
an area in the, in the brain you can see here in, in cycle. And, and, and besides, we know now well that it exists a specific pattern of heart rate changes uh, uh, during the anticipation of, in, of an emotional stimulus, that, that is uh, a brief and, and small deceleration at the beginning, then uh, a brief and small as well acceleration, and then a profound and deep deceleration until the, the, the perception of the emotional stimulus, then an acceleration when the, the emotional stimulus is eventually uh, perceived. And this is now clear that there is a specific uh, physiology during emotional anticipation. Now, what do phenomenology tell us about anticipation? Well, Husserl has described the tension, the structure of anticipation, as an openness toward the future anticipated under certain conditions in the form of waiting, and as a tension, spanung, toward the event to come. And although there may be some kind of emotion in pretension at the, at the spanu, as a tension, yeah, uh, it is Varela and Duprez who has work that describe and argue for, uh, for a temporal adding process uh, that is not merely a formal dynamic from which affect and remain absent. But rather emotion uh, are, are at the core of the dynamic. Uh, now, can, what can what uh, phenomenology tell us about crisis? Uh, well, phenomenology tells that there is uh, two subphases in uh, the crisis. The first subphase is, uh, is a non-lived experience, uh, an interruption or rupture, as it has been uh, conceptualized by Husserl and Pierce. And this creates a blank in the continuum of the experience. And the second uh, subphase uh, of the crisis uh, leads to a lived emotion at that time, uh, along with the, with the sense of the current situation. Yeah. Um, as we will see uh, later on, this, the crisis composed of two subphases is strikingly consistent with the cardiac activation during these phases, uh, during surprise, especially. Uh, but before that, uh, what physiology tell us about, uh, um, about crisis? Um, there are many work that have been done concerning the activation of the heart with the perception of an emotional stimulus. And one study, oh, uh, sorry, uh, much of these studies show that there is an activation of body uh, functions in, uh, with the perception of an emotional stimulus, especially, especially the heart system. And one of these studies of particular interest to me, um, and in this study some authors have shown that some types, some type of emotions, namely anger, sadness, happiness, and fear, can be associated with specific patterns of heart rates and respiratory changes. Each one can be associated with a specific one. And what is strikingly consistent with the view of, of James, the James view, of a specific body activation associated with each type of, uh, of emotions. Also, there are a lot of neuroimaging uh, studies that have found region of interest uh, associated with the perception of an emotional stimulus. And uh, many of them have found the involvement of the body perception uh, that is interoception during, uh, during both the, the, the emotional experience and the, the perception of emotion, emotion, uh, feeling from the body. And this is associated with the activation of the insular cortex, the same brain uh, uh, area we were just talking about a few minutes. So indeed, crisis is associated with specific brain and cardiac uh, physiology. Finally, what about aftermath? In, in, his, in his genetic phenomenology, Husserl reconsider um, retention with a passive and dynamic meaning, where uh, retention is understood as a resonance. Uh, that is a structural consequence of the after effects of, of an event. And he discussed, he analyzed the, the example of the aftermath of deception. Uh, which may follow uh, uh, the crisis of a shock and the anticipation of a hope. And interestingly, with, uh, uh, while, while we have 
used the, the uh, explicitation interview methodology in our uh, protocol. Uh, we had pre preliminary data uh, that indicates that as a crisis and the aftermath and the anticipation, aftermath may be, may be composed of, of subphases. Of subphases, like when you are uh, experiencing a strong emotion, there may be a phase of some type of bodily and internal loosening, then a phase of internal speech and a phase of, a phase of, of feeling, maybe violence if the emotion, emotion was, was very strong. Um, now, what physiology tell us about aftermath? There are many studies as well that have investigated the cardiac reaction after a stress. And it has been shown that depending on the, of the type of the cognition within aftermath, uh, the process of recovery from a stress may be different and more or less long uh, at the function of, of, the, of the cognition. And for example, it takes about 10 minutes for the heart system to recover and to return to its resting level after the expression or inhibition of, of anger. Um, the brain physiology is also activated during aftermath and involves, here again, uh, the insular cortex. The insular cortex, there are less studies about uh, aftermath and brain physiology, but uh, the, the, it is not quite clear if the, the insular cortex is, is uh, activated, but it seems to. So again, there is a specific physiology during aftermath, especially cardiac physiology. Until now, we have seen that we could find evidence of our arguments, both in phenomenology and neuroscience, for uh, a temporality within emotions composed of three phases. Now, how can we integrate this temporality to provide a dynamic process of emotion? To do that, we contend that surprise is the core of the dynamic. And we do not understand surprise as a mere brief and intense reflex reaction with poor or no emotional properties. But rather, we contend that surprise is an emotional process, that surprise is a dynamic of the three phases as a whole. That is, it contains the organic tension, the waiting or, uh, horizon of anticipation, the crisis, and the after effect of the aftermath. And we also argue that the physiological correlates of the, of the prize are the indexes of the dynamic, namely startle reflex and cardiac defense. Um, I will, uh, of course, explain how this physiological uh, uh, process can, be, can, can, can index the, the surprise and the dynamic. Um, Startle reflex uh, is a well-known reflex, which is a brief and intense muscular reaction uh, that have been associated with a very small number of, uh, of neurons. That is, uh, only two neurons is, is, the, is, is necessary to, to, to elicit a, a startle reflex. And uh, there is no influence of the intentional, of the, of the intentional, of the intentional process. And startle reflex is, is uh, believed to reflect the internal variations of the organism and is strongly influenced by uh, emotional context and emotional disorders, including depression, as it was, as it was uh, said by, by Bruno. The second uh, uh, reflex uh, associated with surprise in, in, uh, in experimental protocol is uh, cardiac defense. And uh, cardiac defense is a stereotype pattern of heart rate changes uh, with acceleration and deceleration components. And interestingly, the very beginning of the cardiac defense is a heart rate acceleration of about 15 beats per minute and, uh, and, and, and heart rate acceleration has been uh, well, it, it thought to be related to the process of, of defense. Defense where there is a priority given to action over reflection, cognition. And this is consistent with the view of a first phase that is a non-lived experience or rupture. While the second subphase of the crisis uh, may be indexed by the heart rate deceleration uh, that, that appears after five or ten seconds of the cardiac defense, and this is now the time for cognition. 
cognition. Um, interestingly, it has been shown that the cardiac defense depends on some factors, including the emotional context and anxiety and personal, personality disorders. Uh, well, it, it, it is influenced by the emotional context. We have said that all the three phases of emotion belong to the dynamic of, of, this, of surprise. It is quite obvious, I guess, for crisis or aftermath, uh, but it is less clear for pretension. And the question is, does pretension belong to the dynamic of, of surprise? Indeed, while it's clear to me that pretension allows for the experience of surprise, that is, surprise emerges from the difference between why I anticipate and what eventually happens, uh, the question of surprise without, ex without explicit anticipation remains uh, quite uh, unclear. Um, and in, like, like in the case of someone out, out of sight yells surprise. Okay. Um, but in contrast to what Gallagher contend in How the Body Shaped the Mind, um, we do not contend that surprise is, not, is, due, is due to the absence, to the lack of anticipation in this example. Rather, we, we contend that in a normal state, everyone continuously anticipates what should happen in a similar situation, like it has been conceptualized, for example, like, uh, by Hume and Jameson Habit. And the reason of the surprise in this example is that it is because my anticipation is no change in the context that a change in the context evokes a surprise. So when it seems there is no anticipation on the suit of the complex cognitive process, there is indeed pretension that relies on the lived body. Uh, and to, to account for a surprise and pretension in, in this case, we must consider the internal body reaction within surprise, what is called interoception, because indeed the shout of surprise is associated with the release of body modifications, consistently with the startle reflex in the cardiac defense. And these change correspond to a change in the interoception, which is delivered in the brain. Here, the surprise corresponds to the sudden change in interoception, and pretension corresponds to the recurrence of regular variations in my interoception. And the hypothesis of pretension, in our view, is thus the recurrent variations of the ph physiological function of the body constitute a, f a, familiar state, a familiar state in which the recurrence of identical variations is expected. And that's why an intense change in the recurrence constitutes a surprise. Focusing on the heart system, we could have the, the following hypothesis, that heart beats are systematically linked in a way that the previous one announces the, sec the, the following one, and then rupture in this regularity evokes a surprise. There's a broke in the recurrent pattern. Um, now we begin to, to glimpse how a heart, uh, how a heart, a heart center model can be. Uh, uh, used uh, to, to, to propose a model of, of, of emotion and uh, how it can be an alternative for the mind-body problem, as it has uh, been said by Nathalie. Uh, and indeed, uh, uh, Nathalie, following Varela's suggestion, uh, has proposed to consider a, a heart-centered model rather than a brain-centered model in order to articulate the subpersonal neural aspect of emotional mechanism with the immanent, lived, expressive aspect of emotion as a subjective phenomenal at core frequency level. And indeed, the heart system is, is much more integrative than the, the, the brain system, uh, as it is double-faced in the same way as the body system as a whole, that is, it is both physical and lived. And there's indeed an experiential continuum between the body, the heart, and the lived experience. Interestingly, and moreover, some authors regarding a large amount of studies uh, have provided a model to understand the connection between uh, the, the heart and the brain, especially during emotion. 
and there is a strong connection of these two uh, systems and uh, this allows us to consider a continuum between uh, the lived experience, the heart system and the brain. And in this model, the heart physiology is believed to be a sensitive index of the brain integration during emotion. Finally, the model of, hem of, of emotion we have uh, described until now is strikingly consistent with a recent model of emotion proposed by a neuroanatomist named Craig, uh, who argue uh, following anatomical findings that indicate links of the body with the insular cortex, the uh, brain uh, uh, area I was talking about, that the heart acts before one's awareness, awareness, and as such sets the stage for emotional experience. Craig described a, a, a sequence, a special sequence in the insula, uh, that is the integration of first the information, uh, information from the body, the interoception, then the motor information, then environmental information, then hedonic information, and then at, at last, the, the complex cognitive uh, process. And the, the, whole, uh, the, the whole integration leads to what, what you call the global uh, uh, emotional moment, that is a lived experience of emotion. Uh, and interestingly, this uh, special uh, integration is, is consistent with our temporal view of this integration. Um, Moreover, Craig contends that the heart is a key feature that contributes to the temporalization of emotional emergence. But how precisely can we argue that the heart system sets in motion the temporal dynamic? As, in, as proposed in the neurovisceral integration uh, model, the heart system is the heart rate changes are the correlates, uh, uh, sorry, are the indexes of the integration uh, of, the, of the brain uh, and, and, and body systems. And it is also to our view, the correlates uh, at both uh, physiological and experiential uh, levels of the three phases of emotion, that is uh, emotional fluctuation of anticipations rupture of crisis and, and resonance of, of, of aftermath. Uh, what dynamic leads to dist uh, distinct uh, emotional experience such as anxiety, fear and rumination res respectively. Um, and this view is consistent with the, the Craig's view, the Craig's, the, the, the Craig's, yeah, the Craig's view of, of a time base in emotional experience that may be driven by the heart system activation. That is, while, while the, the heart system is activated, there, there are more global emotional uh, moments that are uh, integrated and then uh, a lived experience that is a, a, a lived time that is, that, that is delayed. And explicitly, uh, T. Lee, uh, Craig said that probably, even there's only few experimental data about that, the heart system and the heartbeat inputs in the brain may be an important uh, system for the, for the time, for the time base and the, and the temporality. Very close to the conclusion of the first part. <laughs> uh, let's try to have a, a, a synthesis of the, of the model. Here is a summary of our model of emotional emergence that include both accounts for, from physiology, neuroscience and phenomenology. And there is two dimensions. There is a dimension uh, of, of uh, a special dim uh, dimension um, in which we contend that three systems are required to, uh, to, to for the emergence of an emotion, which are the context, body, the heart within the body, and the brain. And this, uh, this uh, system uh, 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 display themselves within a temporal, uh, temporal uh, the, the three temporal phases we have described uh, uh, previously. And in anticipation, they may have a cue stimulus uh, uh, in the context, what 
may be associated with the body schema associated with orienting and a pattern of heart rate changes associated with emotional anticipation as it has been described. And in reference to Craig's model, there may be a global insular activation. And the lived experience of anticipation at, at that moment may be some kind of emotional fluctuations. Like you can see in, like you can experience in hope, for, for instance. In the crisis, the emotional stimulus is perceived and then the body reacts, reacts with a startle and defensive uh, action. What is associated with early pattern of heart rate changes, like in the cardiac defense, and a partial insular activation at, at the first subphase, and a global, uh, then then a global activation in the second subphase. What corresponds to the lived experience of arousal and cognitive blur, that is some kind of blank event, as a first subphase, and then lived emotion as a second subphase. Then, when in the aftermath, when the emotional stimulus uh, has disappeared or, or, or have been uh, habituated, uh, the body changes in a way associated with renting or restoring, and the heart uh, is activated following the late pattern of heart rate change and cardiac recovery. And there may be a partial or global insular activation in the insular cortex. Uh, depending on the presence or not of the emotional stimulus and the intensity of the cognition associated. And the lived experience may correspond to cognitive appraisal of the emotional context and then more or less perseverative cognitions. Depending on the intensity of the crisis, probably. Um, okay, arriving to the last section, I would like to show how the model of uh, the temporal dynamic of emotional emergence can be heuristic for the understanding of emotional reactivity in depression. And the background of uh, my research on depression is the strong link that associated uh, uh, depression and cardiovascular disease. And it has been known for long that patients with depression died from cardiovascular disease, which is the first cause of death, uh, of death indeed far from suicide. Uh, but it is only recently that depression has been officially recognized uh, as an, uh, an independent cardiovascular risk factor for cardiovascular disease by the, the WHO, the World Health Organization. And very recent uh, data uh, from the WHO confirm that mental disorder are the, yeah, very recent because they are just published on, on September 2013. Uh, uh, that mental disorders are the leading cause of burden worldwide, far from the cardiovascular disease or cancer. And um, uh, among uh, mental disorders, depression is the first cause uh, before anxiety, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. Um, just to say here that there are many data on the links between depression and cardiovascular disease that concern not only myocardial infarction, but also uh, stroke or cerebrovascular disease. And uh, at this time, <laughs> the physiopathology of this association is still unknown, as you see. Although some have proposed a network, <laughs> a network of causes included <laughs> two physiological uh, processes of interest. Uh, to us that are uh, the endothelial dysfunction and heart rate variability. Uh, we are indeed interested in our lab in, in these two physiological hypotheses that are uh, endothelial dysfunction that refers to a decrease in vascular reactivity, including cerebrovascular reactivity, and heart rate uh, variability that refers to a decrease in heart rate reactivity in uh, yeah, uh, heart rate variability that re that refers to a decrease in heart rate reactivity uh, just some few explanations about that if you allow me <laughs> uh, going fast <laughs> uh, okay um, there are pulsation in the brain as you may know uh, that are the consequence of the cerebral blood flow. Maybe you know the pulsation of the brain. And, and, and the reactivity of the brain arteries. And 
the brain tool satellite can be uh, recorded using a new uh, uh, ultrasound technique we are developing in the lab, and, and Bruno is one of the, the most brilliant specialists in the world about it. Uh, and this technique is quite simple to operate. <laughs> Uh, and required a, 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 an ultrasound probe to be fixed on the, on the temporal uh, uh, bone of the skull, uh, just here. Um, and uh, we obtained such, uh, such images. Uh, here you can see nothing, <laughs> but this, that's, that's the imaging we, we see. And we, we must analyze, of course, this imaging. And here you see quite better that there are some uh, red and, uh, and blue points uh, that indicate the, the, the pulsation of, of large arteries. And this is an interesting uh, technique because it is much more uh, 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 precise than the MRI. Uh, 100, uh, 1,000 more precise, uh, 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 both at the spatial and temporal level. The problem is that we can, we can see only some volume of the, of the so we have to focus on, f focus on specific brain region. And it, it is uh, much more uh, easy to, to, to fix and not traumatic. You know. And we have, have already, already tested this technique on depressed subject at rest and found that the, the brain uh, pulsatility of, of dep uh, depressive subject is dramatically decreased at rest compared to control. And here you can see uh, you can see the, the example of two subjects with and without depression. You can see clearly that there's a decrease in brain pulsatility. Now, heart rate variability. Very quick, quickly, heart rate variability corresponds to a calculation from the heartbeats, classically recorded by ECG. And when uh, in this calculation, you transform, transform the heartbeats at the function of time in the heart rate at the function of time. And strikingly, this, this function is not linear, but periodic and sinusoidal, which is uh, uh, explained uh, by the dynamic interaction of the nervous system with the heart in its heartbeat regulation. And just to remark about it, it is interestingly, interesting to see uh, yeah, that 80% um, of the uh, uh, neural fiber, uh, fibers that connect brain with heart go uh, from the heart to the brain. And only 20% of it goes from the brain to the heart. And so there is much more, probably much more information that goes from the heart to the brain than the opposite. Uh, her, uh, HRV can be, can be characterized by several indexes, and it's classical to distinguish high and low uh, uh, HRV, what correspond to, to large and small amplitude variation, respectively. And, and low HRV is now a very well-known index uh, that has been associated with clearly, uh, with in, clearly yeah, in numerous large studies with poor cardiovascular outcomes and bad health outcomes as a general. And more recently, depression has, has been associated with low HRV, although these results are inconsistent and a probable reason for that is the heterogeneity of clinical presentation of depression. And indeed, if you're taking the criteria for depressive disorder in the psychiatrist Bible that is uh, DSM-4. There is theoretically more than, than, more than 200 possibilities of clinical presentation of depression. And among these clinical symptoms, anhedonia seems to be particularly associated with cardiac disease and low heart HRV, which makes it an interestingly candidate for, uh, for the in an investigation of the heart system within uh, anhedonia. I see uh, the presentation. Uh, yeah, it, um, following, yeah, following the the numbers. Do I have a different permutations of symptoms? Uh, no, no. Uh, if you take each symptom, then you make the combination of, of each of these symptoms. You get more than two hundred possibilities to make a, a diagnosis of depression. But you you keep the same symptom. You just 
uh, put them together in a different way. Um, besides, new data indicate that anhedonia may be a disorder of, anticipate, of anticipation, if, uh, especially anticipatory pleasure, rather than a disorder of consumatory pleasure, which makes anhedonia a possible disorder of anticipation. We have then the following hypothesis of a link between anhedonia and low HRV that may be mediated by impairment in surprise and anticipation. Besides, recent uh, data through meta-analysis um, uh, indicate that depression is associated, uh, associated with global emotional hyperactivity, that is, hyperactivity to both positive and negative emotional stimuli. And how uh, our hypothesis is then the following. Emotional processes, processes are at the core of the link between depression and cardiovascular disease. Depression has been associated with emotional hyperreactivity. Uh, we contend that emotional hyperreactivity is associated with surprise and anticipation impairment. And we aim at showing that heart rate variability and brain pulsatility are markers of surprise and anticipation impairment. And the main hy hypothesis is that surprise and anticipation impairment in depression can be characterized by, by an by an hyperactivity of cardiac and cerebrovascular physiology. And to test this uh, hypothesis, we are doing at, at the moment a protocol in which we aim at uh, uh, showing a cardiac and brain uh, hyperactivity dur during emotional anticipation in depression by measuring heart rate and brain pulsatility uh, in a S1, S2 protocol. And with this protocol, we could characterize the heart and cerebrovascular uh, physiology during the three phases of emotion. And we make the hypothesis to see a decreased amplitude of uh, the physiology compared to control. In this protocol, we are doing also brain imaging and explicitative interview to characterize the lived experience of depressed uh, people in the three phases of emotional emergence in collaboration with our philosopher colleagues. And in collaboration with our uh, linguistic colleagues, we, we re uh, record the spontaneous verbal expression pr uh, produced uh, in reaction to the viewing of some pictures uh, of some pictures during the crisis. Because the, the S1 and S2 protocol, the, 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 the functioning of this protocol is that S2 is an emotional uh, stimulus that is in our uh, project, it is a, a, an emotional picture, either uh, a, a, a picture of injuries or a, an erotic picture or a neutral picture. And we assume that the, positive, the er, uh, erotic is a positive one and injuries is a negative one. Um, and the S1 is always associated, it is a first stimulus, S1, first stimulus. Uh, it is a stimulus that is that is uh, that announced six seconds before the images the content of the uh, emotional uh, of, the, of the S2 that is uh, the pictures. And uh, here is the, an example of okay, I just okay of, of what the, the subject uh, can see during the protocol. Uh, so the, the first the first. Uh, here, object in the S1, which lasts two seconds, then a, a, a fixation period, and then the apply emotional stimulus, which is a neutral emotional stimulus. This one I can show you uh, erotic if you want, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big uh, uh, old one. It doesn't work so much, <laughs> but I'm sure you like towel as well. Uh, and, and and this is the the aftermath which is a, a, a period of, of 40 seconds where the subject just has to, to look at the, at the screen. And we, <laughs> <laughs> and we continue on recording these uh, physiological. 
at the end of the After Effects, after each uh, pictures, we, we ask for the subject to rate uh, the emotional uh, intensity that he, that he has felt, felt during the, the viewing picture with uh, uh, this kind of uh, evaluation that is a classical and very widely use, uh, using uh, uh, method. Okay, to finish, some preliminary data. We have, at that time, 11 depressive people and three healthy controls that have been recruited. And we, we have, have already found that uh, the basal uh, HRV is uh, uh, it increased, uh, well, in, uh, well, it is, is, um, is de uh, decreased actually, but in, uh, with, the, with the index that is LF, HF, which is a special index, but is strikingly consistent with the literature, uh, that in depression, the basal uh, HRV is decreased while in control it is increased. And what's, what, what is uh, most, uh, more interesting is we found that the startle is associated with an activation of the heart system in control, here, and, uh, and, uh, but not in, the, uh, in depression. That is, during the startle, uh, because um, the S2 stimulus is uh, pictures, but also uh, startle reflects, that is, uh, a sound of uh, 100 uh, decibel. And um, during this, the, the startle reflex, well, the cardiovascular, system, the cardiac system uh, do not, uh, does not change in depression, while it uh, dramatically increased more than 100% uh, uh, in the control and about 0% uh, in, in depression. And there's no activation of the heart system during uh, a, a startle reflex. Suggesting that then a hyperreactivity or lack of reactivity of the heart system to surprise in depression. What is consistent with our model of emotion? Thank you. You mean the first, uh, what, what we call the first phase of uh, the crisis? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just curious, yeah, right. Okay, uh, well, about the heart activation, there is a, a, an increased heart rate, clearly, in a, a strong increase, in increased heart rate. Uh, in that non-experience, in the non-experience. Yeah, well, it, the first time, just after the presentation of, the, of this emotional stimulus. Okay, uh, just an increase of heart rate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would make sense, okay, what about the brain? What about brain? Um, but less of an increase in the depressed patients than in... Oh, well, actually, we, we don't have result about that. We don't have a, a, a <laughs> we don't have a, a, an analyze the, the data because it's quite complicated. Bruno is a specialized, uh, special, special, more specialized, specialized of, of, of brain pulse activity, but uh, <laughs> heart rate is, is quite more difficult. Uh, no, we, we don't have any, any data about that in our protocol. But so, in general, I can tell you in general, but in this protocol. And then for the, for the and in terms of the depressed uh, patients, like, yeah. Yeah. are you considering, it, it, is it kind of depression, is it, is it um, like, is it clinical depression, is it momentary, is somebody who, I don't know, self-diagnosed who says they're depressed, or is it long-term, short-term? Yeah, we use the, the DSM-4 criteria for major depressive disorders. Yeah, DSM-4. Oh, well, actually, there is no DSM-5 uh, at that time. That's what oh, yeah, you mean? Okay, right. um, and and we, it's, it's a good point because we have to characterize very, very well the, the clinical aspect of our depression. So, we, so the, the, the patients are, are undergoing many uh, scales you know, to, to evaluate uh, their, 
the anhedonia, the level of, of, the, of the anhedonia, that is uh, anticipatory anhedonia and, anticipatory, uh, and consumatory uh, anhedonia, and, uh, and uh, the level of anxiety, because it is uh, an important uh, factor that is associated with an increase of the heart rate, uh, heart rate while in depression it is a decrease. Uh, and personality as well. We, we investigate uh, about two, 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 240 items to, uh, to uh, uh, investigate, to characterize the personality of uh, our patients. So we try to have a, a good yeah, uh, yeah. clinical uh, investigation of, of them. Uh, I, think one of the, uh, I was wondering, uh, will you compare um, the issue of surprise or the surprise in, in this set with uh, people who control their heart rates, uh, like in meditation. And is there an issue? <laughs> but, I mean, there might, I, I don't know what the result would be, but I think it would be interesting to see. There are uh, studies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you've already done, okay. Indeed, there, there are studies about, 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 about that. that is, in, uh, in trained uh, meditators, um, the anticipation of a stimulus of a, of a pain, I think it was a pain, a pain like a shock in the hand, um, is associated with an increase of the insular cortex during the anticipational phase and a decrease in the uh, activation of the brain during the, the, the stimulus of the pain. So that's kind of, is it opposite then? Or uh, 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 it it, I mean? Compared to, to, to controls, yes, it's quite opposite. Well, it is a, a, a difficult question because in anxiety as well, there is an increase in, uh, of the insular cortex during the anticipation, but there is no decrease uh, activation of the, of the brain during uh, pain. In the heart? Oh, the heart, there is, I don't think there have been look at the heart in these studies. Yeah. But that would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Checking this against, um, or with reference to the question of medication, these patients are not medicated. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point. Actually, what, what I did not say here, that uh, we have a, a third group, which is a, a group with, of depressed people who are, uh, have remitted from, from depression. And, uh, well, in the, in, the, in the depressed group, we take whether people with medication or not. But uh, we then could compare uh, the, this group to the group in, in remitted condition, which may have or may not have a medication. So we hope to have in the, in the two groups the same uh, level of medication so that can be compared without an influence of the medication. Seems like you had interesting permits for psychopharmacology. Yeah. Prescription and so on. For psychopharmacology. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is implicit in almost everything you said, but remember two days ago we were talking about exactly how this, these cardio measures are indices of the different portions of the of the facility and duration block. So potential. What's yeah. the way? What's the instant? Impression. Impression. Potential. Impression. impression. Uh, retention. Hmm. Can you just state again how then? How, how okay. Are, what are the um, well, we, operationalizations yeah. via cardio measures yeah. of these three cerulean these, uh, I, One is tentative to say moments, but I don't know if that's the word moment is also misleading. Yeah, phase. Phases is misleading as well because they bleed into each other. Loads of Okay, well, all right, phase the other word anyway. At the personal level, not at the subpersonal level, but at the personal level, if we look at uh, correlates, physiological correlates uh, of the heart system, uh, while you are anticipating, there's, to be, to, to be short, a decrease in heart rate. When you are in the crisis and you, you see... Decrease, increase. Decrease, sorry. Decrease, decrease yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Until the, the perception of the emotional stimulus, then an increase of the heart rate, followed immediately by a, a profound decrease, then a uh, longer increase but smaller in amplitude, and then a, a, a long decrease but smaller in amplitude that lasts more than one minute as a whole. And then uh, different variation at the function of the cognition associated with the aftermath. That is, if we're in ruminations, there may be low uh, variations. That is um, a bad uh, uh, index, of, well, uh, an index of bad outcomes and bad health and bad, uh, um, bad functioning of the, of the, of the body. And, and we're talking about time spans of the water process? Uh, in the anticipation, six seconds. Six. All of these are within six seconds. Well, it's a classical protocol, yes. No, just anticipation. Anticipation, okay. So, so that's probably very, I mean, protension. That's a very long, I mean, I, I mean, it's impossible to put a time, <laughs> you know, describe exactly what these are, but somehow when, when I think of protension, I don't think of six seconds. Of course. I think of the, um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think of one big fat second. Oops. How much? Half, half a second? Well, you can't tell. I'm not going to lie. But six seconds, it doesn't sound like protection. It sounds like it's really an anticipation. Yeah. Um, which you, know, you use the word anticipation. But, but the question is, is your anticipation uh, something we can correlate with the Husserlian protention, or should we correlate with the Husserlian anticipation? Actually, we can. It seems to be more likely to be the latter. We can reduce the time uh, and delay well, the, the temporality within anticipation, but about the maximum of the redu reduction is, is four seconds. We can, we can go uh, less at that four seconds. You, you raise a, a, a very technological question, actually, because uh, the difficulty is this discontinuity between what is qualitative, I mean, the lift qualitative, yes. yeah. and what is quantitative. Yeah. So uh, and there is a strong discontinuity, yeah. you know. So it's uh, impossible to map, actually. So um, they can uh, these two levels. And um, one other hypothesis would be to say that um, uh, maybe it's not, um, it's not the case that potential is quicker than anticipation and uh, quicker than awaiting and quicker than, I mean, why, why would it be the case? I mean, you, 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 may, you, you may have a potential that uh, lasts a long time. Mm. And something yeah. that's really, I mean, in the genetic, ontogenetic, <laughs> very uh, archaic uh, level. And um, so it would not matter to something that would be quicker. I mean, why, why would we have this kind of hypothesis? Uh, maybe it's not so mechanical. So it's just to say that it's quite conventional, actually. <laughs> so we, I think it's a misleading to, to try to, uh, well, it's the effect, of course, of the presentation, but it's difficult to do a lot of But it's, um, maybe it's, it's misleading to, uh, to try to, uh, to, to uh, quantify something that's qualitative. I mean, uh, on, the level, on the level of lived experience. And it's better to say, well, these are two levels and they are quite distinct. And it's, uh, we don't have, it's very easy to try to confuse them or to crush them one above the other by wanting to measure something that's not measurable. But I don't know if it's. Yeah, I, I, that may be true. I mean, I'm sympathetic to that. But, uh, you know, the, the conversation that began a couple of days ago, it was your group that I understood to be wanting to make this kind. Um, connection between these measures and the Husserlian yeah, yeah. measures. So, so um, you know, uh, so I, maybe, maybe these connections are impossible to make. I'm just, no. just I'm trying to have a problem with thinking about that because my, my, my understanding was that you were making that claim. Yes, but I would say that um, this claim is, um, uh, is something that has to uh, be understood as. Uh, methodological distinction right. and not as a, an experiential uh, claim. Uh, I mean, 
the, the set is uh, quantitative uh, because it's uh, not subjective. So I mean, you are, we are measuring things that uh, that are not uh, lived by the subject directly. That uh, so exists in the brain or in the uh, heart. Does that apply also to the uh, the this issue that we've been asking about the the blank, the the non-experience? To what extent is what is your what is your evidence again for there being a blankness? What, what is the, the 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 time duration? No, the, that's your question. The well, duration. You say that there's a sort of blank moment of yeah. experience. On well, the basis of what do you say that? On the basis of the cardiac defense reflex, that is uh, this this thing here. If you let it start all, yeah, there is not f five seconds here, and uh, there is a, um, a strong. Five seconds. Yeah, well, it, it's ten seconds. So it's, it's on the, in, in the middle, so it's about five seconds. And uh, within the, the, the first five seconds, there is a, a, a strong in increase, increase in uh, heart rate changes, about 15 uh, beats per minute. Upon the presentation of the stimulus? Yeah, just after. But, and so, OK, but that's a, that's a cardiac measure. So how can you go from that to say something about the It's our hypothesis. Instance where you simply don't, uh, you're able to uh, 
to to uh, great to, to 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 think or, or to say anything or to formulate what's happening, what's going on. So it doesn't mean there's nothing again, but it's a kind of uh, uh, um, well, it's a moment uh, of that. No, 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 well, it's a, it's a, a moment. It's a moment about which we can't say anything or don't know what to say. Yeah, kind of. Um, whether because it's nothing, or whether it's an experience of nothingness, or something it's else, un un or an experience of something ineffable that's not nothing. <laughs> I agree. You could be a lot. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, where, where do you locate that? Uh, a clear cognition to me. This is not my area of expertise at all. But my question was, you mentioned earlier that 80% uh, of the information seems to go from the heart to the brain. Yep. In a decrease in heart rate, wouldn't there be a lot less information making it to the brain, which would cause some sort of pause? Yeah, well. It wouldn't be a lack, complete lack of experience, but definitely slowing down enough that. Yeah. You're right. In the when the heart rate increases, it, it, the, uh, the hypothesis is probably right. That is, the the information delivered in the brain is is, is increases as well, and uh, it provokes uh, saturation, saturation. Yeah, that's right. Saturation, uh, saturation in the in, in the insular cortex. So the the, the neurons are, are kind of blocked, and they cannot integrate until the the information from the brain is. Is uh, sufficient is su sufficiently low to uh, low for global integration. Saturation. Yes, Satur some kind of, of saturation, hyper reactivity that that block the other uh, integration in the brain. What moment is that? Uh, in, uh, in when, when the heart rate is, is uh, increases. Uh, exactly. You are like submerged by, by the, 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 the increase of the body reaction and you can't reflect, you are blocked and, uh, until the, the, the body reaction di diminished. And Yeah. The most well uh, known region to be associated with uh, anticipation, especially during emotional anticipation, is the insular cortex. Uh, well, it, it, to me, it is the, the, the region which is more specifically associated with, with, the, with all the, the um, I'm sorry, among the three phases, this is within anticipation that the insular cortex is the most specifically uh, increasing, is the most specifically increasing. Okay, then that can identify by... MRI? Uh, you mean yeah, in, yeah. In, in our protocol or in uh, other protocol? Well, in other protocols it's by... Um, MRI? Yeah. yeah. And in, in our protocol, it would be brain, brain pulse activity. But you, we need the, uh, yeah, we don't have the. Uh, yeah, it, it should be in the lab, but you know, <laughs> you're here with the. <laughs> but that, that, that might, that would be. I mean, how can we. Okay, uh, how can we make sense, or I suppose there are hypotheses about this. Uh, Difference or this disconnection, well, maybe it's, it's, maybe it's too strong, but this difference between the brain activity and the public activity. Considering that we've shown that those two are so closely related. D during crisis, you mean? No, during the anticipation, the, the protection phase. There is no difference. There's, 
uh, oh, I would have the impression that the brain activity was uh, much more intense. Intense and uh, not cardiac activity. Um, not exactly. Uh, uh, well, there is there there is a, a decrease in heart rate, which is about five five bits per minute, which is mm -hmm. a strong uh, activation from from um, well, mild to moderate moderate activation of the heart system. So, uh, you know, MRI, uh, you, you see it's very small activation. You know, it's about 1% of 2% of the change in the blood flow. So it's not a, 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 a big activation. But, yeah, in, in uh, EEG, yeah, we can see yeah, there's a strong uh, uh, electric wave, which is proportional to the intensity of the emotional stimulus anticipated. That is interesting. It depends on the... On the uh, affective load in anticipation. Okay. Like you know, uh, the anticipation of uh, injuries or uh, erratic couples is uh, induce a large uh, brain wave. Like how can they anticipate themselves? Yes, well, as you said, there are many kinds of uh, depressions, um, but only. Uh, Patients suffering from, from anhedonia uh, seem to suffer from the disorder in anticipation. So maybe this uh, disorder of um, anticipation might be a feature to distinguish between uh, anhedonia and other uh, types of depression. But do you have any idea of the, the way uh, other patients or patients who do not suffer from uh, anhedonia, do, do you have any idea of uh, the way they anticipate and the way they, they react uh, in these kinds of situations? Probably the, the main uh, factor that influenced the heart system within depression is anxiety. Mm -hmm. That is, if you have depression and anxiety, uh, we have right now, to my mind, uh, we have uh, in the preliminary results, we, we found that those who have a, a high level on, of, of anxiety as assessed by uh, our uh, scales uh, uh, have a higher reactivity of the heart during startle. That is, the, the people with a high level, uh, the low level of, of anxiety that, is, that are depressed have a, a, no reaction, while those who have anxiety have a small reaction, but have a larger reaction that, that uh, those without anxiety. Um, and we also control uh, anhedonia with scales as well, and we, at that time, don't think we have correlation between the level of anhedonia and the level of heart, uh, heart physiology. But it is our hypothesis, yeah. But these are quite... Uh, uh, yeah, the stage of hypothesis. There are a few uh, uh, work about that, so it's a hypothesis to test, and we have uh, we control as well the personality uh, uh, aspect of the of the of uh, the, the patient, and I have um, a student that is working on, on that, and uh, I can't remember his, his result, but uh, he must uh, uh, have his thesis. Uh, very few days, in few days, uh, but his result, I think uh, he has found a correlation between, yeah, between the heart reactivity and the uh, um, nervosism, that is uh, the tendency, the general tendency to be, uh, to be to worried, to worry about everything. I was interested when you said that Futural temporality relies on the lived body, hmm. the sense that the, the body projects no change. Then you went on to talk about heart, and I, I was still on an older, but certainly a Freudian point that temporalization is, it comes from drive. It is become what? From drive, from pulsion. Hmm. And I just wonder if, if there's a place in this analysis to link heart not only to brain, but also to organic drive. Not sure I understand your question. What is drive as in desire and trust. Trust. 
So, so what, what, is, what is the, the what, what is the ground of, of temporalizing in the sense of projecting no change? I would say from this early, and it's one point for Freud and Husserl and I agree. Yeah. From that perspective, it, it's it's what we call drive, treat. Drive. Okay. Yes. Who's who's okay. In French, it, it's transfer. What, you mean what? Is there a place for that in this analysis? Ah, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I don't know the, exactly the, 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 concept, the concept, the notion of drive and pollution, but uh, we, want, we want to be able to understand in, 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 this, in this account how it is that the body yeah, sure. is moving. Yeah, it's, well, I think Natalie has have, have, uh, talked about that many times in an in a, in a article about rainbow of emotion that is uh, the heart system is always anticipating and, that it, and, and always. Uh, 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 goes in, in, uh, try to escape f from the body, you know. So maybe it's some kind of uh, way to uh, understand uh, the, the, the notion of driving. And you know, if if, if the within the body there is a structure that want to accept uh, uh, to go out the body and then to, to, to push in a way the body uh, uh, both in, in the space and in time and. We can understand maybe the heart system in, in this way. I would be tempted to hypothesize that the heart beats the way it does because it's attacked by drive, wanting something. Mm. Yeah, possibly, yeah, right. What kind of, at what, at which level, at which level of uh, measuring would you be able to find that? I mean, yeah. at, at a physiological level? I mean, with the, the measures you have at different physiological, peripheral uh, aspects of the body? Or would it be? Uh, In, in what uh, moment? I to don't know, because uh, what kind of measure could be, uh, I mean, <laughs> sometimes we say that uh, there are some neurons of empathy. Yeah. So who are the neurons of drive? I mean, I mean it's okay. already well. Uh, okay, well, there is a strong correlation with, with, uh, of heartbeats with some brain structures. That's what you, s you want to, to say. Uh, and these are uh, well described in the model of Craig. Uh, the model of Craig, uh, and sorry, I must find the here. Uh, and it is the, I mm, can remember, it's, it's, a, it's a striatum. It's a striatum, it's a, it's a uh, it's a heart uh, brain uh, region which is very close to the to the brain stem. Uh, so the the heart system goes in the brain stem, and then just after in the in the in, um, brain system that is called the striatum, and, and then in the insular cortex. And each time the the heartbeat pulse, there is also an impulsion in this uh, region of of the brain. So is that the question? <laughs> It is associated with. Yeah. Well, what we know is that in depression there is a decrease uh, brain reaction to heartbeat. That is, if you are measuring at the same time heart rates with an ECG and and uh, uh, el el electric reactivity with an EEG. And we correlate the, the two. The, the, there is a, a correlation between a, a specific wave and heartbeat. That is, probably in some millisecond, there is a, a, an association with, with is unbe a heartbeat and an electric wave in the brain. And in depression, the, the power, the global power, the activation is clearly less uh, intense uh, uh, during heartbeat. And each time, uh, there is a heartbeat. There is a less integration in the uh, less uh, intense integration in the brain, and uh, it has been associated as also with the uh, decrease of heartbeat perception. That is, uh, a feeling of the body de uh, decreased in depression. And depressed people can well, feel less well their their body. And again, to if if you uh, act, if you uh, modify the uh, the the uh, 
um, uh, the integration, well, the, 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 the processing of the information from the heart to the, to the brain with uh, medication, uh, you provoke a, a time dilatation. That is, you are, uh, with some testing, you, you, we, we see that people take the medication, have an impression of, of a time dilatation. You know what I mean? So in the experiment, you would tell them that in six seconds, I'm going to show you yep. an erotic image of a new Ah, yes. Yeah. Is, is that right? <laughs> you want? If, if that was the methodology, you can tell them how long it would be? Ah, probably. You want, you, you, you want, you want the experience, at the, at the entire experience. I'm sorry? You, you want to see the entire experience, that, that's it? Yeah. The anticipation. And what about, about, about that? I was expecting a change or that in the period of suspense, yeah. he was suggesting that there's time dilation. I, I, I'm just asking if you would ever vary the experiment where you would tell them that it will be in six seconds and then you make them wait nine seconds. Or, or, you, make, or you don't even show them <laughs> and to register the surprise of anticipating something. You should do experimental protocols, I guess. <laughs> uh, we if they maybe experience incongruent objective spans of time yeah. as, this, as the same length mm. subjectively because of the, 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 the leveling out that might occur in heightened suspense or expectancy that becomes a condition. Well, it's a good point. I don't think we have, uh, we, we, we may have some uh, uh, answer to this question with the uh, explicitative interview, I guess, but uh, we don't, we don't uh, change the, the duration. We don't have um, modulation about the anticipation phase. So uh, it, it would require a new protocol, I guess. So this, uh, this earlier question we had about the anticipation period lasting six seconds, yeah. that, I'll, I'll, that's entirely a phenomenon of this specific uh, why? The question is why? Uh, why? Okay. Why, why six seconds and no longer? That's the question. Okay. Um, well, we would like to, to, to do uh, less, actually, uh, less than six seconds, about four seconds. But uh, to, to, um, to measure the, uh, dec the decreasement of the heart rate, which is cl uh, classically, uh, we, we must have about six seconds because there is no time for a clear deceleration. If we have only four seconds or two seconds, there, there's no time for the heart to, to, to decrease. And, and for the other markers of the, f uh, the physiological markers, there, there are no change in such small uh, uh, duration. But uh, and, and the opposite, if you uh, uh, increase the, the duration of the, of the of anticipation, uh, there may be some uh, kind of mind wandering and uh, you know a, 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 diminu uh, a diminution of at, uh, uh, attention and uh, yeah so and it makes the protocol and duration longer as a whole because it, it lasts for uh, half an hour or even one hour as a, as a whole so it's uh, kind of difficult for depressed people to be attention uh, all the time. Process, yeah, surprise. The whole process. We, we we make the hypothesis that surprises must be understood that the whole process to uh, to account for uh, emotion in anticipation, in crisis, and in aftermath. Okay. So at the moment of crisis, you said we don't have any experience. Hmm. Is there any cognition at this very moment? Mm. Probably no, but the explicitative interview will tell us more about that. We, we make the hypothesis that there is no uh, cognition other than action, actually. There is a, okay, just uh, turn the head or just move the, 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 the flee, a, a, a flight if there is a, a threat. Or, 
you know, uh, it's, it's a motor reaction and, and no cognition that is okay. I have a threat in, fi in, in front of me, but I know it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a snake, but it's a snake. I know that I, I don't have to be afraid because snakes are, are more afraid than I am. You know, it's no time. You see a, threat, uh, a snake, you go away. <laughs> and after you say, okay, uh, I don't have to be afraid. I know uh, that a snake is not uh, dangerous to me. Well, uh, depends. Do we have You mean in, in each phase of emotion? I mean, after the cognition starts yeah. at the end of the whole process of surprise, but we have some kind of cognition Well, we have cognition, uh, I think, well, to, to be a, a bit reductive, we have, I guess we, we would say that we have cognition at the, at the moment, of, well, at the beginning of the second sub-phase of crisis, but not at the first, but uh, in the second sub-phase of crisis. It is about five seconds after the beginning of, this, of the, the, the perception of the stimulus. So for okay. okay. We're going to have to Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we can go on. Thank you.